Good afternoon, everyone. It is June the 8th, believe it or not. Um, and um, it's time for our story time again. Um, this week has been a big week for our family. Um, as those of you who um, know us, and sorry for those of you who may not know who I am, my name is Sarah Parker, and I am um, the Director of Children and Family Ministries at Presbyterian Church of the Way in Shoreview, Minnesota. Um, and it is my joy and pleasure to get on here on Monday afternoons and um, share a favorite story um, to kind of help with um, this time where things are so very different. I know that for a lot of my friends here in Minnesota, school is just wrapping up. Some of you may have finished on Friday or Thursday last week, and some of you are at the next to last day today. So congratulations on finishing out the school year. I know that it has been a very unusual one, um, especially this last trimester. Um, so I wanted to share um, a story today that is a favorite of mine ever since I was a little girl. When I was little, uh, my parents subscribed to something called the Weekly Reader Book Club. And so um, I think it was probably every month, not every week, um, I would get a new set of books in the mail. And some of them, um, a lot of them have become kind of treasured books for our family that st still are on my kids' bookshelves to these days. So I had to go down and kind of look through their bookshelves. Um, but this one is called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. And for those of you who may be familiar, um, the movie, there was a movie that was made um, by the same title, um, but this one's really special to me because if you look right here, I don't know how well you can see it in this light, it has my my very, um, very fancy um, handwriting in it to let you know that it was my book. Um, this book was written by Judy Barrett um, and drawn by Ron Barrett, and the year on this one says 1979, so that tells you a little bit. Um, and this one, um, it specifically says is published um, by Weekly Reader. Yeah. So I always like to give a shout out to publishing companies um, and say thank you for letting us read stories to children during this time um, when uh, kids can't go necessarily and hang out at a library or a bookshop or those kinds of places to have story time. Um, now we can bring it into their homes, um, at least during this time. So, all right, without further ado, here is Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs. And you'll notice it's diff very different than the movie. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we each could eat and Grandpa was doing the flipping. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed toward the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten including the one that landed on Henry. <laughs> that night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, Across three hot deserts and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse with about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. And there's Main Street. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. 
The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Can you imagine? <laughs> Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. <laughs> Can you imagine? The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were ever leftovers, and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. <laughs> I love this one down here, <laughs> even the dog. <laughs> the umpire watching. <laughs> the food falling from the sky. <laughs> the menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was already coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny side up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast. And most of the time, it rained milk afterwards. For lunch one day, frankfurters, or hot dogs, already in their buns, blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. So this picture I love. Ralph's Roofless Restaurant. So you see it's open and the food just falls in, falls on the table. <laughs> Poor woman. <laughs> Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops, becoming heavy at times, with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by a gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the West. Ah. <sighs> dun da da da. <laughs> The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for a sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the do dogs and cats. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and the turtles and the whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower gardens. Sounds like a pretty good plan. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worst. And the newspaper says, spaghetti ties up town. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day, there was only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Another day, there was pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of the meal, and they got stuck in the fog. So apparently stinky cheese, droopy broccoli, 
Brussels sprouts <laughs> at a birthday party <laughs> and pea soup fog. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds and some without. There was white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than they had ever seen bread and rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged and the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, the people piled as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds picked at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got staler and staler. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of its weight, so they had to close the school. Can you imagine? Lunch one day brought 15-inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick, and the day ended with a stomach ache. Cream cheese and jelly. Hmm. Heard of peanut butter and jelly. That one's new. There was an awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse toma to tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seeds and pulp everywhere. The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up, and there was no more school for the children. Look at those donuts. <laughs> so a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. This man's trying to pick up a hamburger that's fallen on another man. Look at the pork chops in the sky and the giant ice cream cones. Crazy. So the people glued together the giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style, with peanut butter. They took the absolute necessities with them and set sail on their rafts for a new land. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town, which welcomed them. The bread had held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary houses for themselves out of it. Wow. Bread, bread houses. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to get used to was getting used to buying food at a supermarket. They found it was odd that the food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs, 
and no one ever got hit by a hamburger again. Nobody dared to go back to Chew and Swallow to find out what happened. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. The next morning, we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter on top, and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. Do you see it? <laughs> the end. <laughs> I love that story. It's not as serious um, or, and, and it doesn't have as pertinent a message as the ones I shared last week. Um, and I apologize for that. Um, I wanted to pull out something that was a favorite this, this week. Um, next week, though, um, I'll share some books that really are talking about some of the issues that all of us are dealing with right now. And um, so just to give you a heads up on what's coming up this week in children's ministry at Presbyterian Church of the Way, um, this Wednesday at six o'clock, we're going to have our 30 minute Zoom um, extravaganza kids club experience. Um, so we'll have a game and a story and maybe a music kind of thing. <laughs> and then um, the 14th, so a week from today, um, we're going to have our next movie party. And that'll be at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And the movie this time around is Onward. Um, for families who are a part of the church, um, I'll be sending out information so that you can connect to that. However, if you are watching this and are interested in being involved, um, please feel free to um, email us at um, Presbyterian Church of the Way, um, www.pcotw.org. Um, that's where you can get a lot of information about things that are happening in the life of the church. Um, and I also want to give you a heads up that in the next couple of weeks, we'll be having our first virtual vacation Bible school experience. We're going to have three experiences over the course of the summer. Um, one in June, one in July, and one in August. And information about that will be going out uh, this week on our um, webpage, as well as through email and on our Facebook page. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, should be a lot of fun. I hope everyone is staying safe and um, that you are doing well. This morning, um, well, I'm, I'm taping this <laughs> on Sunday. So this morning um, in our worship service um, during our children's message, um, I shared about how we all are like a beautiful bouquet of flowers and that all of us are unique and different. And that is what makes a bouquet lovely. If we were all the same, it would be nice, but it would be uninteresting and so um, I hope that in the days ahead that all of us can learn to love one another um, and to embrace and celebrate our differences um, instead of using them as weapons against one another. Um, I love you all so very much. I miss seeing you. And just know that even though we're not together, you are always in my heart. Take care and have a great week. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.